The following is a presentation of EcoGeek.org. That's how we roll around here. In this, the very first edition of anything video to do with EcoGeek, we are bringing you exclusive coverage of famous people like Daryl Hannah, who was once a mermaid, and Annie Nelson, who was married to the red-headed stranger. And we are bringing you footage of them talking about biodiesel. And a rare and exclusive glimpse into the world of biodiesel conferences, our champion investigative team has penetrated the walls of the National Biodiesel Conference in Expo. Gavin David James Harper is our British correspondent who happened to be in Texas that month. He interviews people from the 25 by 25 initiative and then talks a bit with Daryl Hanna about her views on sustainability, biodiesel, and genetically modified foods before moving on to talk to Kelly King and Annie Nelson about Pacific biodiesel and the future of American fuel. Without further ado, Gavin Harper for EcoGeek.org. Hello, I'm Gavin Harper from EcoGeek and I'm here talking to Michael Bowman who's going to tell us about the 25 by 25 initiative. 25 by 25 is an agriculture-led initiative in the United States calling for 25% of the total energy consumed in the United States to come from America's working land by the year 2025 while continuing to produce safe, abundant, and reliable uh, food, feed, and fiber. We have over 400 endorsements nationally for our initiative. We have 22 governors of the 50 governors in the United States who endorse us and four state legislatures. We also have concurrent resolutions in the House and the Senate in Washington, D.C., calling for 25 by 25 to be the renewable energy strategy of the United States. And what sort of innovative technologies do you believe will be delivering this change market by the year 2025? We probably don't know what we don't know. We're seeing some very exciting technology coming from uh, biodiesel from algae, transitioning from monoculture to polyculture as we watch uh, grasses and perennial grasses not only begin to provide uh, an enhanced wildlife habitat, but also then provide significant uh, resources to transform themselves into cellulose and ethanol. Thank you very much. Thank On behalf you. of EcoGeek.org. Oh, very very nice, nice meeting you. I'm Gavin Harper from EcoGeek and I'm here today talking to Daryl Hanna about the future of biodiesel. It's very early days for the biodiesel industry. What do you think is the future trajectory and what do you think that we need to watch out for at this stage? Well, we're at a serious crossroads right now. Uh, it has in the last four years grown so crazily fast. This convention itself used to just be a tiny little convention with a few hundred farmers sitting in a hotel and now it's a huge convention center and there are thousands of people jumping into the game, people are spending money and um, that you know, obviously gets things moving in a very treacherous direction. So to make it uh, hold up to the promise that it has um, for being actually a renewable and sustainable fuel, we really have to watch how it develops. Very easily it could kill the environment, very easily it could you know, be more damaging to the environment by lana cropping, by channels, by, uh, by you know, shipping and slashing and burning and all those things. And, and, and it could very well destroy all of those dreams that, that Biodiesel presents and that, that really all of us who have been really leading the charge have been championing. And what do you think about genetically modified organisms in Biodiesel? I, I'm really not a fan of genetically modified organisms in general, in food, in Biodiesel, or anything. Necessarily genetically engineered to have pesticides in them so that you can spray less pesticides and so that you can spray more pesticides and they still will die. I mean, it's just it's crazy thinking. You know? It's just not right. Do you think biodiesel should be done on a, on a small scale or on a big scale? Do you think that it should be community owned or corporate owned? What do you think is going to deliver us into a sustainable future? The most sustainable model really is um, to so Hannah, thank you very much for EcoGeek.org. Thank you, EcoGeek. One of the uh, great things about biodiesel for business is that we can actually write a contract for fuel. You know, I can give um, one of our customers a six-month or a 12-month contract and the price of that fuel is going to be the same the whole length of the contract. So they can then turn around and quote somebody else. You know, if you're a paving company or if you're some company that 
fuel is a large part of your cost and you give a quote to a city or a county or a private company that wants a, a driveway even, and then during the length of that contract, fuel goes up so high, you lose money because you can't change your quote. So, you know, part of the beauty of biodiesel is it, 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 it does, it, it has a relatively fixed cost. We're not relying on the whims of somebody in the Middle East who wakes up one morning and decides his mansion's not big enough. We're looking at the real costs of production, uh, you know, a fair profit above that, and then, um, you know, this is what we're going to sell fuel for. We've done it in Hawaii, we've kept our price flat, you know, the first eight years before we raise our price. But what we've done since then is raise our price once a year based on um, production costs going up and cost of living going up. And then other than that, you know, we're looking at getting a fair profit. We're not following the petroleum curve. And that's right. another area where this industry is starting to go, especially in Texas. Everybody wants to buy biodiesel based on what um, the price of oil is in the Middle East. And that's not right. No. That's not why we don't I mean, we don't want to help some obscenely wealthy oil producer here, or oil distributor here, to, you know, continue to, to make obscene profits at the expense of, other, of the common good, just to expand his mansion either. And that is the point, actually, of keeping the community and creating a situation where monopolies can exist. Thank you very much. On behalf of Rico, Rico. Fascinating stuff. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you to all of our guests. My favorite part, I think, honestly, was the very end of Daryl's interview where she laughed at our name. I don't want to, you know, stretch too far here, but I'm pretty sure Daryl Hanna thinks we're cute. I'm Hank Green, editor-in-chief of EcoGeek.org. Technology for the environment.